Napoleonics. Visually stunning and rich in glamour, Napoleonics is the white whale of historical gaming. Eventually it calls to all true historical gamers. In this video, we want to aid you on this journey of self-discovery, your journey to become one of the few, one of the cantankerous, one of the grognards. Well, that was a little bit over the top, Miles, uh, but we do get a lot of interest in Napoleonics here on our channel, mm -hmm. and a lot of people asking how to get started in what can be a little bit of a daunting period. Daunting? It can be god terrifying with all the vast scope, the uniforms, all of the different types of units. Throw on top of that, adjusting to the jet setter lifestyle of the Napoleonic gamer. The entourages, the paparazzis, and the parties. The ho, the parties. Parties? What parties? I don't get invited to any parties. That, 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 that's not important now. Let, let's focus more on getting, getting people into this hobby. The sweeping scope of this era may be daunting, but that's why I love this period of history. There's a myriad of major combatants fighting in blizzards or driving rainstorms. There are battles in mountains, towns, and across wide open plains. You can even expand outside of Europe to uh, Wellington in India, or South America, or even the U.S. War of 1812. Perhaps the first thing to realize is that you can't do it all at once. That, that's right, Greg, and I think our first tip is for people to pick a particular campaign or theater to focus on. One of my favorites is Napoleon's Ulcer, the Iberian Campaign. It's a fascinating period with lots of colorful characters. The armies involved are both interesting, but also on the smaller side for Napoleonic battles. And that's not an inconsequential issue when you're first starting out. And after picking a campaign, new players are, are having no, another decision to make, which is what scale of battle and actually what scale of miniatures they want to use. That's right. So you have to ask yourself the question, are you looking to play the Battle of Waterloo, the entire battle at an army scale, or are you going to zoom in a little bit and maybe do a Pujamal at a battalion level? Right. And, and our next kind of tip is focus on smaller scale uh, uh, miniatures because they're quicker to get to the table and they're a little less expensive when you're just starting out. 28mm is the most popular scale for miniature wargaming generally, but unless you really want to start with skirmish gaming, such as sharp practice, I'd suggest new players consider 15, 10, or even 6mm scale miniatures. My rule of thumb is that the bigger the battle, the smaller the scale. Remember, this is a hobby, not a punishment. <laughs> and if you go with a smaller scale figure, it is easier to yeah. get it on the table. Yeah. So we have a variety of miniatures on our tabletop in front of us mm -hmm. right here. Uh, some of these are yours, some are mine. Currently, I have armies that are in six millimeter scale and also in 15 millimeter scale yeah. for this period. And in the video comments below, we're gonna have recommendations for manufacturers for all of the scales from six millimeter, 10, 15, all the way up to 28. And for tip number three, after you've picked a scale, start with the French army. There's one common thread almost every Napoleonic game shares. The French are involved. I think the first army you should paint up should be a French army and then one opponent for the campaign you selected, as Greg suggested. And remember, the French armies are not composed entirely of Imperial Guards. Build out basic line units first and add the, sh the showboats later on. Hard to argue with that, Miles. But uh, I think now we should delve into something a little bit more controversial. Rules. Yeah. You know what? I'm just gonna tell you guys, the best No! Set. No, that way lies madness. All joking aside, Napoleonic rules are a subject of some debate, especially in forums that don't really need to be mentioned here. It's been said there are more Napoleonic rules available than there are Napoleonic gamers. There really isn't a single best rule set but there are lots of great options out there. You can see some of the rules we play with club right here. Greg, let's just share a few options. Absolutely, uh, so my favorite scale to play at for Napoleonics mm -hmm. is the army level. Right. And for army level games, I like a classic rule set called Volley and Bayonet. Uh, I'm also a fan of a more modern system called Blue Shirt by mm -hmm. Sam Mustafa. Yep. Uh, and for core level actions, I prefer a rule set called General D'Arme by Dave Brown, which I think you may have seen us use in the Ocelots video. Mm -hmm. Also, ESR, a 10 Sands Resultant uh, from the Wargaming Company. For beginners, Black Powder by Warlord Games is also very popular. I would consider it scale agnostic, and that's a system we've reviewed on the, here on this channel, and it's actually a very easy system for people to get started with. While we don't play a lot of skirmish level Napoleonics in our club, Alex over at Storm of Steel on YouTube does. And if that's something that you want to try, you should go over and check out some of his fantastic battle reports. Let's talk about basing. Uh, different rules have all sorts of different types of basing requirements. And actually, it's, it's not that important. The most important requirement 
is that both armies be based roughly the same. Yeah, it is interesting that a lot of new players seem to really stress out yeah. over basing in particular. And our advice for you is that stress isn't really warranted. Yeah. I suppose if I were to give some advice on basing, the smaller the better. Why? Because you can group a few bases together to form a larger unit if that's what the rules call for. Both Greg and I base our 15mm Napoleonics using the Venerable Age of Eagle standard, where an infantry base is three quarters wide by one inch deep. Uh, I've yet to find a rule set from ESR, General Darme, or any of the other ones we've talked about earlier uh, that doesn't work with this convention. All right, let's get to our next tip. Uh, this is a period of history notorious for tons of different uniforms with different colored plumes and coattails and collars. Do yourself a huge favor and get a reliable uh, piece of source material. You can get something big and chunky, or you could get uh, a, a thinner book like uh, an Osprey series. The Wargaming Company has a superb set of campaign guides that's an excellent source material for novice or veteran gamers. I've got all of their campaign books which are fabulous sources. This is the new, uh, to assure my dynasty, the uh, Iberian campaign. You get a set of scenarios, you get some uh, uh, historical reference, but most importantly, you get these wonderful uniform plates that for every unit that was in this campaign, there's the uniform guide there. It's a great source. I highly recommend these. I've got them all uh, and I use them quite often. Miles, I do want to offer everybody a bonus seventh tip. You should set a goal that allows you to get a small game on the tabletop as quickly as possible. Don't spend two years trying to paint everything that you need for Waterloo, or honestly, you're just going to run out of steam a couple of months into that project. That's one of the reasons why I don't recommend beginners start with 28mm. Uh, they look stunning, they're fabulous figures, it's a lot of work to paint up a single battalion, and so kind of the wait time from prep to play is pretty long. And I offer you this advice as someone who has a fairly extensive 28 millimeter Napoleonic collection. Uh, they were one of my first historical projects starting when I joined the hobby in 2009. They look great, but I haven't had them on the tabletop in years. In fact, I think the last time I played with them is 2016. Uh, I use my 15 millimeter Napoleonics all the time, uh, and they took a lot less time to paint, and I have a much more extensive collection. Well, there you have it, our six or seven tips for how to get started in Napoleonics. If you are a veteran Napoleonic player and you have some advice to offer, we would love to hear about it. Leave us a comment below. This is a period of history that intimidates a lot of new players, but we think it is well worth the effort to get started. Well worth the effort indeed. Well, I guess it's time for me to hop on my G7 and return to the Napoleonic gaming circuit in Monaco. I don't often game in Monaco, but when I do, it's Napoleonic.